Hi everyone, welcome back to the top tier PvP YouTube channel. My name is Brendan, I'll be your moderator for today's video. In this video I'll be discussing the um, basics of PvP related content in World of Warcraft Dragonflight. It's up to date currently. Um, we'll be discussing some of the basics including currency, uh, the def different types of uh, battlegrounds in particular. I'll have specific videos associated with each of those battlegrounds documenting some of those walkthroughs. But as of just like a general uh, idea of some of these battlegrounds, I'll be listing those in this video for today. Um, we'll be going over arenas, different types of arenas, different types of PvP brawls, etc. Um, you know, world PvP, PvP related events, epic battlegrounds, arena skirmishes, kind of all in between just being introduced to PvP if you're coming from a very heavy PvE related background. Um, what it's like to be in a player, vicious player, combat experience in World of Warcraft. Um, to start, uh, player versus player uh, is, again, player versus player. You'll be versing someone uh, throughout the game who has control of that particular character. Um, whereas in the PvE, it's player versus everything, being, you know, an NPC, a non playable character, where it's computer generated or AI generated. So, not so familiar with PvP, that's kind of like the general idea between it. You're playing in a multitude of battlegrounds uh, VI the 2v2s, 3v3s, 10v10s, 15 versus 15s, 40 versus 40, etc. Um, in order to maximize your gameplay and to have a bit of more um, um, unique play style, I guess, or, or, or competitive play style as compared to kind of more routine oriented base style as uh, PvE related content provides. Um, so as player versus player comes to be and there's tournaments being held in WoW and stuff, and Blizzard holds tournaments every from time to time for arenas and BGs and etc. So it's great to keep up with that particular comment. I'll put their website in addition to their uh, PvP related content too as well in the description below. Uh, but to start off this video we're just going to go over some of the basics. Um, you can do PvP from an early uh, level 2 as well. It doesn't necessarily need to be. It could be onwards from, I believe, 10 onwards to 70. So in between the level of 10 to 70, you can play any class, any specialization in PvP, and that also includes tank class. So heals, tank, DPS can be all involved with a PvP match of the sort. You know, an epic battlegrounds, random battlegrounds, you can even do it in arenas as well too. So, um, be sure of that if you've kind of like mastered a particular class, don't sweat that you're not going to be excluded from a particular PvP match. Um, you will be included within that because you will have the option to as your particular spec. they have made it available for each of those particular classes. Um, to start, again, um, I prefer to heal. This is based off preference in terms of, you know, doing battlegrounds and arenas. I love to heal. I love to kind of be the backbone of, you know, the damage output in terms of supporting class, you know, not like the top damage obviously, but in terms of increasing the damage component of my damage heal damage players to the damage, taking them them quick, healing them in return, and putting a bit more, I guess, stress on my end. Um, but it seems to do pretty well under stress in order to kind of a reap up a higher reward as I like to see it. So I love healing. I've been doing it since uh, I've been playing PvP since BC ever since I started my World of Warcraft kind of, you know, experience and gameplay and so forth, so I've really enjoyed learning along the way of my particular class and my specialization in Disciplined Priest um, from then until now. Um, so we're currently in the Dragonflight expansion, um, and there's been some changes towards PvP um, via different patchworks and so forth, and you can actually find the latest update too as well via your class and spec before you jump into the Battleground to see some of the changes if you're familiar with some of the other if you're not familiar with the particular updates that may have affected your PvP class, including your like you know overall damage and healing output, I will put that in the description below as well for you to take a look at um, as well. But let's continue the video. Um, to start, um, in terms of uh, let's see, we can start with gear wise. There's two different types of gear. There's PVE gear and there's PvP gear. PvP gear distinguishes itself typically from versatility based gear. It allows you to have a damage reduction in addition to a uh, healing increase too as well to your gear set. You can notice the stats included within your character info under versatility. Mine's currently at 28%. There is a cap currently at versatility, so when you build up a certain amount of versatility, 
the percentage wise is decreased beyond I believe 31 or 30 percent um, and that way you can um, you know have specifically how much versatility you need associated with that you could switch up the secondary stat for um, your particular gear set um, to start yep again it, the gear set is going to be primarily for PvP and related as opposed to PvE um, you are going to notice that the equipment is specifically on PvP items too as well that say equip increases item level to 450 in arena and battlegrounds those are the types of gear pieces that you'll be accumulating over your PvP period from level 10 to 70 you do build honor points up from winning battlegrounds and epic battlegrounds so uh, we'll go through the player versus player here and what you can do is head over to your currency tab by pressing um, actually you can press C and then just go right to currency there afterwards I don't believe it has a tab set up for it itself but what you can do is just knock out some of the old PvE related tabs and go to currency and then mark under player versus player so player versus player currency is what you're going to be associated specifically versus anything player versus player content. You've got bloody tokens, conquest, honor, and toll barad recommendations, and a host of other particular honor points and tokens and so forth associated with that. Um, it looks like I don't have any honor at the point. Oh, I do. I have 11,334 honor points. So honor is a currency that you get from basic battlegrounds. You do non-rated battlegrounds from honor. Sorry, you accumulate honor from primarily you do accumulate it from rated battlegrounds in addition to random battlegrounds, but you do not. Um, uh, but you do all. But you do not achieve rated. I'm sorry, conquest points from rated battlegrounds, whereas you do from um, rated battlegrounds. So that's the difference between the two: is that you do have honor and conquest currently associated with gearing up your particular character for. Uh, you know, improving the quality of your uh, game style and the overall ability to play either a damage output or healing output for your particular class. So again, honor is used to purchase unrated PvP equipment and upgrade to as well rated and unrated PvP equipment, which you can do here. Um, primarily, most people are in either Veldraken or Orgrimmar for PvP related content. Primarily Veldraken nowadays, just because the amount of 70s that accumulate here in addition to not dealing with under levels and so forth. Um, anything associated with that, Mitre and Spam and such like that is a little bit more diminished here in Veldraken. So we're here in Veldraken at Gladiator's Refuge and that's going to be our PvP location here in Veldraken. You'll see a, a mix of things such as, you know, dummies and, um, you know, conquest, you know, gear vendors and world PvP vendors, etc. So you just want to familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with this Gladiator's Refuge here in this area. And associate yourself with the honor quartermaster, the conquest quartermaster, and the item upgrade, and so forth. In addition to other elite quest conquest quartermasters too, where you can go into that point too as well to purchase. So check out some of those quartermasters to familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with and what you can obtain once you've acquired more honor points and conquest points by running random battlegrounds and running um, rated battlegrounds, you know, down the line. So just familiarize yourself with the vendors in particular and what you can purchase from there. Um, you would need to start... Honor points do come first typically and they accumulate faster than conquest points. Conquest points are a little bit more difficult to obtain. You generally have to win rated battlegrounds or win battlegrounds in particular like epic or random to acquire rated battlegrounds on a slower scale. So the ability to build up honor points is much more easier and effective to put together your obsidian blue piece uh, through PvP in order to have like a stepping stone in order to achieve your conquest point. So highly recommend if you're just reintroducing yourself to, you know, if you're introducing yourself to PvP um, from PvE, what you want to do is check out one of my other videos too as well that's associated with gearing up your alts that just hit 70 or new to PvP that allow you to um, you know, to gear up your alts in a, in, a, in a quick and efficient manner to get the most out of it for the least amount that you spent too as well via time and money. So check out that video when you get a chance. I'll put the description in, um, in the I'll put the video in the description below for you to take a look at it and it'll give you all the information you need to know about gearing up your particular alt and the process in doing so um, associated with that. 
Um, let's see, in terms of that, honor points is generally used for that purpose. You'll be getting honor points, again, just to recap, you'll be getting honor points from random battlegrounds, from rated battlegrounds. The general accumulation of honor points just rack up over time for various things within those battlegrounds, in addition to winning. Even losing battlegrounds, you still earn honor points. So, it's just significantly less. And so, the idea is just to keep accumulating honor points, and as well as increasing your gear set and substituting out those original greens that you had purchased from PvP uh, into blue PvP. And then in, in, from blue PvP gear set, you increase it to purple PvP, which is your conquest gear. So Valdraken is the place to be. It's called Gladiator's Refuge. Familiar yourself with the vendors in the particular area um, to get familiarized with what you can purchase and what you can't just yet and what you're looking to build up in the near future. Um, the next would be... Uh, we can go over some in relation to some of the battlegrounds to start. Uh, you could find here that you have a player versus player tab. So when you do hit the group finder, which is I on your keyboard, just hit I and go to first player versus player, and that'll bring up a screen called Quick Match. In Quick Match, if you're new to PvP again, you'll need to select your role, which is up here where my cursor is located. The cursor uh, will allow you to, uh, you'll either be a tank, a healer, or a DPS. Again, I like to prefer, prefer to heal for randoms rated BGs, so I highly recommend doing whichever that you prefer, whichever that you feel comfortable with. Um, you can certainly do so in order to um, see yourself put into a queue there afterwards. Um, what you can do here from this next tab over is either select specific battlegrounds or choose just random battlegrounds from different uh, selections you see here listed, such as random battlegrounds, epic battlegrounds, arena skirmishes, or brawls. Um, but I typically choose specific battlegrounds, especially if I'm recording content. If there's still content I still need to record for specific battlegrounds. I'll choose one out of this list. Um, we have is the Warsong Gulch, Arathi Basin, Alteric Valley, By the Storm, uh, Isle of the Conquest, Battle for Galneus, Battle for Wintergrass, Ashran, Twin Peaks, Silver Shard Mines, Temple of Kot Mogo, uh, Seething Shore, and Deep Wind Gorge. And all of these particular battlegrounds are both random and epic battlegrounds. Um, the random the epic battlegrounds that differ from the random battlegrounds are Isle of Conquest, Battle for Wintergrask, Ashran, and um, uh, Altaric Valley. So those are the epic battlegrounds that you'll be wanting to likely end up just separating yourself with if you're not feel comfortable enough to join like a 40 v 40, 40 v 40, uh, then you would say like a 10 v 10 or a 15 v 15 such as the other battlegrounds listed here that are just random, or more of a smaller scale, less, a little bit more stressful than some of the 40 v 40s. Um, so, yeah, so that's one way to choose out your particular battlegrounds, is to click the tab Quick Match, figure out which battleground that you're interested in joining. It'll give a brief description, you know, so you can see Warsong Gold is Defend Your Flag, Capture the Enemy Flag, etc. You've got domination style matches where you're dominating each individual base, you capture and hold the objectives earn a certain amount of resources um, to gang and I'll make again I'll make individual videos associated with these particular walkthroughs of each battleground in order to demonstrate the um, uh, the experience in itself as a whole so this is just kind of a general recap of these this is Altaric Valley etc so you would want to go down each of these lists and see which one appeals to you most if you're interested in running some of the uh, you know capture the flag ones are one of the, my favorites I like yeah, Warstone Gold I would consider one of my favorites. It's very classic, it's original classic. Uh, World of Warcraft, Battleground. Um, some of the newer ones are a little, a little indifferent between the community um, compared to some of the older style ones like Arathi Basin and Warstone Gold are my favorite. Altaric Valley, these are some of the three main... These are actually the original three were Altaric Valley, Arathi Basin, and Warstone Gold were the three original Battlegrounds in classic World of Warcraft and the most preferred of the I'd say the rest of the group within the community. Um, so yeah, so again, check out what you like. It is a matter of preference. Do what you enjoy. Again, you'll get more honor points if you do play in the epic battle uh, epic battlegrounds as opposed to the random battlegrounds. So you know you could do whichever that you prefer, but you'll learn more. It just does take longer to complete, so you'll have to wait probably. You know, it could take it potentially up to an hour depending on the map. Um, so if you have the patience for it. By all means, do so if you don't want to wait, you know, four different single ring random battlegrounds that only last 15 minutes and you have feel comfortable waiting an hour, by all means, go ahead and do so. Um, otherwise, yeah, check out what you like based off preference. More than welcome to check out, you know, it's all up to you. 
Uh, what you do have here is your honor level too as well. And over time you start building honor. Um, honor accumulates not just your honor points, but your lifetime honor. So the honor amount that you've accumulated throughout your characters on your realm um, that contributes to the honor level. So honor level will actually be posted within um, the uh, within your within the battleground. So you'll see it next to your icon within the tab in the battleground, um, and that way you can kind of decipher some of the higher level honor levels to someone who'd be more conscient or careful to watch out for in, in, in the battlegrounds, as opposed to someone who's on a lower level. We could find to be more applicable to your level, or even lower, so you can kind of you know you know attack them or whatever kind of deal or focus in primarily in the team fights um, so on a level also it gives you an opportunity to over time per level not per level but every 10 or 15 levels or so you do receive specific achievements and as well as certain mounts um, such as like some um, you know charger mounts and so forth and titles and some additional rewards too as well so the more that you do play it over time it builds up it is an 8,000 honor cap, so each time it levels up, it just keeps accumulating more honor. So you can see my next level is at, uh, my next reward is at 75, and I get a glorious pendant apparently. It's a new toy, which I'm super excited about. <laughs> um, I'm currently at level uh, 68, and the honor level is relatively new. It's a new concept, it hasn't been back since, I don't think it was even implemented since like Shadowlands or something. I mean, I haven't even been playing since Dragonflight, so my honor level is about 168 since Dragonflight. Let's get up there. I play a lot of PvP, so what can I say? Um, so that pretty much gives you a kind of an idea of what the overall, you know, non-rated battleground concept will look like in terms of what you could choose from, what kind of playstyle maps that you're interested in, etc. How you can play it, you know, what role that you're interested in playing with it, and so forth. So take more time to look into it. Again, read some of the description before you decide to choose one of the maps. If it's a map you don't really enjoy, you can avoid it by choosing specific battlegrounds and get ones that you really enjoy, as opposed to ones that are random. Like, I hate ores, so I'm going to avoid the Temple of Katmagu, like, it's the, 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 the death of me. It's such a painfully orchestrated, difficult map to work with with a team, especially on a random team that doesn't communicate. So, <coughs> excuse me, um, I don't enjoy that map in particular. It's not fun. I wouldn't highly recommend it to play it as often as possible, unless you're that kind of person. Who knows? Everyone's different. Um, the next we're going to be going down is to check out Rated. Uh, Rated's fun. I enjoy Rated, especially this particular season. The season um, just started back in, I believe, May at the end of, or, or beginning of May or so. So it's been about, you know, three months since the season started. Been doing some solo queues, been testing around with 10v10. I just recently hit 1800 in a rattle battle, Rated Battlegrounds this season, so as a healer. It's been really nice. Been doing a couple twos from time to time, three v threes from time to time. Just kind of playing around, playing around with rated, kind of get back into the game and the feel for it, especially in uh, player versus player. Um, that's really fun. You know, you get different, um, you get different ratings and um, uh, rankings and so forth, similar to what it's always been in World of Warcraft. I'm currently at rival one, which is great. I'm just looking forward to get to rival two. Um, which is awesome. So you get additional achievements and titles associated with that particular, doing a lot of rated games. Um, yeah, so there's solo queue, which is not really my interest all the time. Um, it can actually be pretty frustrating, and a lot of people can kind of, you know, contest with that, or agree with that for that matter. But yeah, so solo shuffle um, is, you're paired up with as a healer in particular, you're paired up with two other DPS and it typically is a three versus three. Uh, well, it is three versus three actually, they, haven't, they don't do two versus three anymore. It is three versus three in solo shuffle and you pair up with a, you pair up with two other members who are DPS and you fight two other members that are DPS and the healer. So your idea is just to keep your two DPS up and keep the other two DPS, you know, when you want to burn off a, a particular DPS or the healer as soon as possible in order to get them down. There's six rounds of this 3v3 arena in multiple different arenas that you can see in some of my other videos as well too that I'll be posting up in the description for each individual arena associated with that particular uh, solo queue. Um, so it's a multitude of different arenas. Solo queue is kind of a drag. Um, it's a good way to grind some arena, quick arena compared to some of the rated battlegrounds. Um, it's a bit more quicker, about maybe five, seven minutes quicker, if not shorter than that, depending on how you know good you're up against in terms of team comp. Um, 
so just familiarize yourself with some 3v3 prior to that and I'll go over that too as well uh, beforehand so yeah so actually to go back to one I did skip out on two other things I apologize um, as we had gone over a few, a few of the random battlegrounds again it's just 40 versus 40 it's random larger versions of battlegrounds basically um, larger scale maps which is more objective based plays and such like that and you just you're dealing with 40 other players on your team and 40 of the players in the office this is larger team fights it's a lot more epic it's a great way to put it it's just epic epic is a great term to use for it and that's what it is epic battlegrounds um, you also do receive a reward for winning too as well when you do these and you do have to win in order to receive these are victorious contender strong boxes and they come up they come together with a multitude of different regions and valuables and so forth that you can use to enhance your PvP gear in addition to additional honor points as well as conquest points as well too. You can also, for random battlegrounds and epic battlegrounds, arena skirmish and brawls, um, one thing I do have to mention is that they are dailies. Um, that conquest, 70 conquest, only applies one time that day and then it's significantly reduced as well as that 110 conquest is significantly reduced. And that 25 contest is significantly reduced. And that 15 conquest, which I think I've already done, is significantly reduced. And it resets every uh, every day. Um, so just be, keep that in mind is that you don't want to just keep grinding these particular battlegrounds, especially if you have to wait 6 to 10 minutes. Uh, what you want to do is just be in mind that do it once for the day and then do something else. You don't have to continuously do it in order to, you know, grind more conquest here. It's pretty much not necessary if you can just keep running graded battlegrounds or arenas for that matter as a priority to accumulate your conquest gear because you'll be earning more and you can earn a lot more on a regular basis than daily than the random battlegrounds. I also see that during raided battlegrounds or arenas for that matter individuals tend to be a bit more experienced and skilled and geared for that matter as well too so Take that in consideration when you don't want to go up against a team or with a team that has full greens, still in PvE gear, and that are not performing to their higher extent. Keep that in mind um, when that comes into play. And, um, you know, to avoid that particular situation, what you can do is just do more arenas and grind more arenas in order to get conquest points. Um, the next battleground type would be Arena Skirmish, which is a 2v2 or 3v3 deathmatch. And prior to arenas, which is great to build yourself up for raided arenas, or RB, uh, not RB, just but rated arenas, either 2v2 or 3v3 in particular, is that you are paired up as a skirmish, so it doesn't necessarily count. There is no rating increased or decreased. But when you do skirmish, it basically is just a uh, a test run. You know, it's just a practice. It's practice. It's practice. It's practice. This is what a skirmish is. It's basically just practice. It's practice from a 3v3 to death match. First one to die wins the round, six rounds, etc. Same thing as Arena, but you do get significantly less conquest points. But when you win, it's just more experience for yourself to get readjusted into actual Arena based games that are rated instead of non rated. Um, Brawl, Pax House. So, Brawl set differs between like once a week, I believe. Um, it does switch off between each week. Brawls are associated with different unique style maps that are from your random battlegrounds. Um, pretty cool you can get different kind of unique scenarios looks like this week is packed house this is team deathmatch in arenas so instead of three versus three this is 15 versus 15 in a very small condensed arena style setting so in a 3v3 it's just like this circled enclosure uh, with 15 players versus 15 it becomes quite the hassle uh, so it's kind of like an epic small showdown really quick you get some quick conquest quick honor from it uh, it's a last team standing wins kind of match, so check it out. There's a couple other brawls too as well that you can look into that are really fun that switch off and they'll give you a description too as well. Again, these are specific dailies in these circled pieces. Circled chests, these are all daily rewards, so just be aware of that. Um, you'll be needing to do those on a daily basis to get the full effect of that particular reward. Um, the next to go down, uh, we'll go back to rated again. Uh, talked about a bit of solo queue similar to arena skirmish it is basically just rated it accumulates your rating over the season so forth how many games that you played etc um, you know seeing if you're not performing well or underperforming or overperforming etc it really depends on your, your gameplay and learning and, and the capability capacity to learn as well too so enjoy solo queue when you can as a DPS it's a little bit more enjoyable because you don't have that pressure as a healer I, I would say 
to you know to overperform, but sometimes DPS to perform, you know, instead of healers. So so much you can do. Do your best. Solo queue. It's they're throwing your stuff on the fire. That's basically it. Two v two. You cannot join as a party. Uh, you cannot join unless you are actually in a party. Solo queue you can join itself because it is randomized with players that you don't know. 2v2 you do want to familiarize, familiarize yourself with a the group member, either being party or finding them in pre-made groups. Um, but what you want to do is familiarize yourself with a friend, make sure he's an experienced 2v2 player in particular, make sure he can you know, benefit you as a, as a particular team comp with a particular particular class. Like right now I believe the top 2v2 two, two two, um, PvPers right now are Dis Discipline, Priest, and the Ret Pally. Um, just because of the amount of you know sustainable hard damage and uh, damage reduction that comes from the Priest in return as well as the damage output. So 2v2, it's fun, it's enjoyable again, just make sure you're playing it with the group member. You need to be in a party to do to queue up for 2v2 because they'll likely end up being it. I highly recommend using the Discord server as well too to communicate with individuals because you will need to be calling you know, call outs and uh, stuns and snares and etc. and healing as well in mid fight as opposed to just targeting people and calling it a day. Communications can be very vital in a 2v2 uh, in addition with 3v3. It's the same thing with 3v3, a little bit more difficult, you know, in terms um, of getting like stuns, uh, you know, on a, a hit on a regular basis and so forth than it is 2v2. Um, but still, you know, fun nonetheless, you also do need to be in a group for two, 3v3 in particular. This is a separate rating from solo queue and as well as arena skirmish. It is rated, it's going to count for that season, it's, it is rated, it's going to count for that season. So keep that in mind. You do get a good amount of a conquest as well associated with 2v2 and 3v3, so use it at your leisure, but you do get more when you do solo queue. So if you want to run solo queue, it's fun. You'll increase your rating or decrease your rating depending on your performance. Um, and so forth. So try your best. Make sure you're geared before you go in. Make sure you're also teched out or talented out in PvP spec builds in particular prior to joining a solo queue. It really does benefit yourself and the team overall. Uh, 10v10, rated battlegrounds. This is what I like to highlight myself with it. Um, really enjoyable 10v10. I love just the battleground opportunity as opposed to arena. Um, it seems to be a bit less pressure as a healer itself and more pressure distributed between the team because there are objectives associated. They, 10 v 10 rated battlegrounds are the same maps as random battlegrounds. Um, it's just that you're dealing with a very high, highly, you're looking to have like a very highly organized team for 10 v 10 than you would say like a, you know, 2 v 2 or a 3 v 3. You gotta call out different strats, you gotta call out different positions such as base sitter and um, uh, you know like um, uh, what do you call it target caller and strategist and you know you got a stealth cap and all this kind of jazz so there's a lot to it in particular but I found it to be more enjoyable and more communicative and, and far more community based than it is say 2v2 or 3v3 um, so yeah I enjoy it rated battlegrounds are a big thing I've got more videos discussing this topic as well too about rated battlegrounds Feel free to check those out too as well within the playlist. Give you some more information associated with some of the talent specs I use for my particular class for RBGs, um, and a, as well as just some additional information associated with rated battlegrounds and specking your character out to optimize for their performance, both either healing or damage output. Um, so that's pretty much it for rated at the, at the moment. Um, I actually, I do want to mention that you do, when you've accumulated a portion of um, Conquest from Rated. Um, what you can do in a Rated Battlegrounds is also for an Earn Rated, which contribute to your PvP Vault. And the Vault is actually located here in Veldraken. It is at the called the Great Vault. You'll find it at the Key Lock that you can see on your map. It's going to be on the uh, uh, just below the Seat of the Aspects. Defeat bosses in Avarice, the Shadowed Crucible, complete in the Keystone Dungeons, and earn Honor and Rated PvP to unlock rewards in the Great Vault. The Great Vault can be accessed once a week. If you prefer to access it um, on, you'll be accessing it every on every Tuesday when the uh, the realms are reset uh, for maintenance and so forth. So make sure you're checking your vault once a week in order to reap some additional gear items that you may not have currently. Like this week, I haven't done much RBGs, been making a lot of content, being YouTube. So I'll be rewarded, say like a 421 item level for PVP. Um, 
And so I'll be getting the rival rating of that in there. I'm already fully 450 pieced out, so it's not going to apply to me whatsoever. But if you're not, it's great to add the digital gear piece that you may not have. The more rated um, that you earn, rated PvP that you earn from rated battlegrounds and rated arenas, the more likelihood that you'll have additional pieces of gear too as well before the reopening of that week. So make sure you're playing as much rated as possible when you're doing arenas and accumulating that so you have a 33.3333% chance of getting a more preferred gear piece that you may not have currently in your set. It does apply duplicates though, so be wary of that. It's going to be important for PvP. Um, let's see, the next step we can go down to, since we explained Conquest and Honor, um, we're going to go down to pre-made groups here on the tab. So we're going to look up, it's pretty straightforward, instead of finding a group, you know, if you know if you don't have a friend on WoW or don't have a friend that plays WoW for that matter, uh, we don't have anyone interested in doing twos or threes, what you can do is also just look under pre-made groups um, for arenas, for arena skirmishes, for battlegrounds, for rated battlegrounds, etc. and customization. Uh, read about grounds. If I click find group, you can find people listed in rated uh, arenas that are really serious and dedicated players who are interested in um, furthering their um, their arena score and so forth. Um, you know, and their experience and gameplay and knowledge and so forth, um, and within this category, and they'll have an indication of which role that they're specifically, um, you know, like mentioning to as well. You've got damage, tank. You've also, oh, I'm sorry, you got class. That's class, actually. It talks about which class in particular that they are. It looks like this one's a Windmonker, and they've got a Pally Retribution, so what can kind of blend in which particular comp suits that. So, like, a Discipline Priest would work well for that one in particular. So, find a particular class comp that works to your benefit based upon your class. class. And you can find a lot of resources online displaying that. So, check it out for yourself online. Great information to look into. Um, highly recommend it. Uh, the next would be... Let's go back to pre-made groups. Get out of this one. Arena skirmishes. Um, again, it's similar to arenas. Not a lot of people doing that because arena skirmishes, again, it's all just non-rated material. So you're likely just going to do it as just practice. So people aren't really looking to just practice arena skirmishes just because you don't really get much of a benefit from it besides just experience. Um, as opposed to rated, so they're not looking to push, you know, in relation to that, and increase their experience once they've gathered it enough from just doing arena skirmishes via the rated tab here. Oh, I'm sorry, the quick match tab here. Um, battlegrounds. I don't believe there's many here either, too. Yeah, I wouldn't bother with battlegrounds. A lot of people don't do pre-made regular battlegrounds. It's a complete waste of time. Uh, it's a complete waste of energy and, and building all that up together. It doesn't look like a lot of people play it. You just set yourself up for random, and you'll be randomized to it. Rated battlegrounds, on the other hand, are a different story. You go down to rated battlegrounds, and you've got your option of. Uh, I've got a friend in one of them right now, Jacob. Um, currently set up for our different rated battlegrounds. So, kind of go through this one in particular. People say high XP in Discord. It's one of my friends, Jacob, likes to point out. Um, uh, it's going to be making sure that you have high experience. So, if you have a higher rating than most, say 1800 uh, plus. I actually, I have a 2200 and 2v2s at this moment, I'll put my rep paladin on a separate server. I do have the experience associated with PvP as well too, having PvP'd since PC for many, many years. Um, Discord, so that typically what means high XP, is make sure your experience in a rated battlegrounds as opposed to a new player. Looking, you know, if new players are welcome, to check out some of the other rated battlegrounds that are listed within the list. Discord, um, Discord's going to be very important, Discord is a voice platform. Um, like similar to Skype, um, where communication is vital and that your ability to communicate with your team is going to be a must um, in order to, you know, to call out objectives and call out incomings and such like that and targets and your strategies and etc. So it's very important to be within that community. So make sure you do have Discord installed on your computer. Um, it's very great. You know, it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, um, app that you can download on your computer, basically installation. So make sure you have Discord. Make sure you're relatively experienced if you want to jump into some of these higher end rated battleground ratings. As you can see, hers is 1752 um, on a rated battleground, and um, you know that's just that's what they've they've gotten over the time as they've looked to increase or decrease their rating. 
Um, don't bother yourself with selling, getting sold by these RBG and Arena. This is all just marketing crap. Playcarry.com. Don't bother with something. They're gonna have you. They're gonna charge you a heap of gold for stuff that you can just base it off of experience. If you want to learn how to play the game, if you want to get better at the game, you play the game. I mean, you don't sell yourself short for, for fucking cash. It doesn't make sense to do so. Um, again, Discord's going to be very important for rated battlegrounds. It's also important for arenas too, as well. If you're looking to be serious about gameplay and increase your rating, um, whereas though if you're not, don't expect to be pushing. You know, just join YOLO matches like this if you're not looking to push often, and fall apart within the second game because everything is rushed and no one's on target, everyone's failing the objectives, etc. So voice is very important. And you'll notice that they often have voice chat listed on there as well too. That'll say Discord, so it's a good indication that it says it. When you highlight it over, say this, it'll say which who's the leader that you can right click and whisper leader. Report the group if they're advertisement, etc. Um, and so forth, and just you know, talk to them, send them a link, etc. If you have like the particular achievement associated with that. Um, so that's pretty much it for the moment for player versus player in regards to different battlegrounds and again I'll be making separate videos for each individual battleground that'll have walkthroughs and such in order for you to um, um, you know get the most out of your particular gameplay and make sure you're, you're in that particular setting for the right reasons uh, let's see what do we got next um, we could go over achievements real quick um, achievement wise, let's go over achievements. Um, so, player versus player achievements. Um, when you go to achievements, I'm sorry, the tab is going to be under Y. So, click Y on your keyboard, it'll open up the achievements. Um, there'll be different tabs to select from here on the left. If you're not familiar with achievements just yet, what you want to do is just take player versus player and then work your way down the achievements of what you've got and what you haven't received yet. So, and what you're currently building up to as well, too. So, um, Check out, you know, honor to start. There'll be honor-related achievements that you can get through different uh, feats of strength, and as well as um, acquiring different honor levels over time. Do you get achievement points for acquiring, like, you know, at uh, 175, I'll get 160 achievement points that will contribute to achievement points, etc. Uh, 100, you know, 50 I'm currently at. It just adds up over time. You get different types of mounts. You get different types of titles, as I mentioned. Again, you get different types of achievements, so check this out as you're kind of introducing yourself to PvP to kind of aim for an objective while you're, um, you know, in these particular battlegrounds. So if you end up doing a lot of Warsong Gulch, just check out, you know, your Warsong Goals. I still need a couple more to do so. Um, but check out your Warsong Gulch matches and so forth if you really want to push for those particular achievements and get the most out of, you know, a certain title or so that comes along with it. Rathi Basin, same idea, Eye of the Storm, same concept. Same thing goes for the rest of these particular random battles. Well. They'll have their own specific achievements associated with that individual battleground. So make the use of it as much as possible in order to um, get the most out of it, get more achievements out of playing PvP. Uh, there'll be some for uh, rated battlegrounds as well too. There'll be some for arena. There'll be some for some world PvP as well too, which will be the last thing I'll be explaining today's video. Um, again. Go for whatever that you choose from. If you really enjoy a map, stick with that map and really grind it out to get that 100th win in Winter Grasp. Again, I've just only restarted play Dragonfight, so I'm a little behind in some of the PvP-related uh, titles and equipments, but I'm, I'm definitely on my way up there to get there, so it's pretty excited about And you should be too. Um, so, last but not least is going to be... Uh, actually, we could go over one more thing that I had missed out, I believe, in a Raided. Uh, is season rewards. So every time that you do win rated PvP matches, included arena, and as well as um, rated battlegrounds, you are rewarded with a vicious saddle. If you accumulate this blue bar that you see up there, that's at currently at 91%, it gets to 100%, and it constantly goes as you keep winning rated battlegrounds and arenas. Um, you accumulate a percentage of that win to that amount in order to get a vicious saddle. Those vicious saddles are s exclusive PvP mounts that are really, really, really cool. They're called vicious mounts. Those vicious mounts are purchased at the Hall of Legends in Argrimmar um, that I will be displaying in another video as well too for you to take a look at. That will allow you to burst with some really cool looking mounts that you can showcase off during certain battlegrounds. So that's the seasonal reward. It's called the vicious saddle. 
Um, use it at the combatant mount, com, um, quartermaster, which is located right outside of the Hall of Legends in the main city of Agamar. So again, 91%, I'm getting there. I've already got a whole mess of them right now. I think I'm only missing like two currently. So it just keeps adding up over time. So the more game rated battlegrounds and arenas that you do play and win, uh, the more percentage of that will fill up until 100%. And then it refills. goes back down to zero and goes right back up to 100%. goes back down to zero, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So make use of it as much as possible in order to get the most out of it and get that vicious saddle. And I'll show you some of the mounts too as well that's associated with PvP in just a moment. So we're going to go down to our collections tab, which is going to be shift P. So you can hit shift P on your keyboard and it's access a little bit more quickly. And so for some of the uh, PvP mounts in a relation uh, to those vicious saddles, what you're going to do is just type in vicious and um, you'll get mounts such as like the vicious black bone steed from that particular vendor. And it'll say where it's located, Agamar, as I mentioned. It'll tell you where it's from, the death card too, as well in the there and right outside the Hall of Legends. And it costs one of those vicious saddles. So you do get one mount per vicious saddle. So you can pick up different seasonal mounts too as well. So such as Raided Arena and Raided, Raided Battleground, you get a vicious saber tooth, which is pretty dope. Pick that up actually at the first season Dragonflight. Um, this one's from the um, the vendor. You actually can't pick that one up unless you did season one. So there's um, that one there. There's the vicious war bear that I bought recently. A vicious saber tooth, vicious war uh, croaker. There's vicious war gorm. Vicious War Snail, Vicious War Tortle, Vicious War Wolf, Vicious War Stalker, Vicious War Strider, Vicious White Bone Steed, um, and there's just some additional ones too as well down the line that you can find from that Vicious Saddle Quartermaster just outside of Hollow Legends in Orgrimmar. So if you're to check it out, really cool stuff, um, some additional mounts, I think those are the mounts that are the best looking, especially for Horde as opposed to Alliance. Um, in relation to aesthetics, so highly recommend if you have a horde character is to use wise that vicious saddle on that character anything else um, So yeah, the last and not the least for PvP introduction to it would be um, um, uh, In relation to I guess yeah, we could go with some world quick world PvP So world PvP by clicking M you can check out some of the various events associated with world PvP and as well as your calendar We'll give off some events too as well um, there are some areas like farming bloody tokens was big at one time um, in addition to checking out some other events that are currently it doesn't look like there's any currently on at the moment um, but world PvP events are just more like you know a group of individuals meet up together and they do certain PvP related content that can give them certain gear or certain item enhancements and so forth it's basically PvP PvE related environment but a PvP in relation to being attacked by enemy opposite faction being the alliance in this case as of a war member. Um, so yeah, so hopefully you were able to enjoy that video and get some insight about what PvE is versus player versus combat, or player versus player, in terms of just, you know, general combat experience, and just overall what to do with honor and conquest, some of the basic battleground options, epic battleground options, the rated options too as well, some of the rewards and achievements associated with you know, uh, implementing more PvP into your life than PvE content. Um, it's just a, again, it's a competitive scene. You are versing people in real life. Um, you know, they are controlling the characters, obviously, but you are versing people in real life. So, you know, check it out at your leisure. Again, it's just a bit more stressful or frustrating in PvP than it is PvE, uh, just because you find other players that are far more experienced than you are. But just give it time, you'll build up your rotation. Uh, you can check out some of the videos associated with, you know, my player versus player rotation as well too, as well for some of the guides, and talent builds associated with it to maximize your ability to, uh, you know, perform at your highest, highest, either by via damage or healing. So check out those videos when you get a chance, um, just to improve your knowledge and gameplay and so forth there afterwards. But yeah, that's player versus player kind of in a nutshell for you. Um, check out the vendors that are currently at Valdrak and enjoy it. It's a step-by-step -step process. You're not going to be some god PvP player overnight unless you familiarize yourself with a lot of, um, you know, MMORPG player versus player combat or like oriented titles. Then you'll feel you'll fit right into the whole World of Warcraft PvP zone for the most part. Just learn your rotation, 
make sure you're, you know, grinding honor and grinding conquest quickly and efficiently for the right purposes. Joining reputable, experienced groups for raided groups. Make sure you want to just get to the next level and not sell yourself short and be disappointed in the entire experience of player versus player. Um, so again, hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope you learned a lot from, you know, what I had to offer in terms of, you know, player versus player as a whole. And um, look forward to seeing you on the battleground. Again, this is Brendan, and I will uh, talk to your PvP uh, YouTube channel. And uh, feel free to check out the top tier PvP Discord as well, too, if you're interested in joining the community. We host PvP related content such as battlegrounds, arenas, epic BGs, events, and so forth in relation to PvP. If you're interested in joining and joining a, a ever growing community that, um, you know, they enjoy this PvP related content. It's fun, it's enjoyable, and it's you get something out of it. We also can teabag gnomes and dwarfs that, you know, who really can't do that in real life. Because that would be illegal to do that and it'd be frowned upon in society. But you can do it in World of Warcraft, so you can make do of it and get away with it. You won't be arrested for it. So hopefully you got something out of this video. Um, also I do have a Patreon that'll be listing in the description below if you're interested in joining for one dollar a month. As low as one dollar a month helps support the content creator and as well as just you know, improving the community and gameplay and satisfaction of the community as a whole. So, looking forward to seeing you on the battle round uh, in PvP, and um, hope you enjoy your rest of the new. And this is Brendan, signing out. Take care.